So I'm going to talk about um, AI custom service agents today. And it's a very practical topic because we could immediately start applying it now to businesses, our businesses, your businesses everywhere. The technology is there and the need is there. So as Rachel was saying, we've sort of gone through this unprecedented speed of development when it comes to AI. Who can remember that just over, you know, two years ago, we started with this AI wave kicking it off um, with ChatGPT, launching the language-based model, and then stability with their AI-generated uh, images. Um, and after that, we had music development come out, uh, Sona is an example of that. Lots of uh, um, AI models that now perfect all these things and now also perfect video production. And a huge advancements has been taking place across um, you know, all these different areas, more recently, the deep research part um, that Google launched and then OpenAI and others followed through was also amazing. And the last and most interesting development that has happened over the past uh, short period has been the reasoning models where the models can reason. And this is by using what is called chain of thought in their reasoning. And what you're seeing now, uh, actually this week, is the launch of the third generation of AI models. It was led first by Grub3 um, uh, from X.com. Uh, uh, and then uh, yesterday, I think, uh, or the day before, Claude from Anthropic also, uh, they launched the 3.7 version. And these, both of these two models have been trained on a much bigger data set. And so they're the next generation of models where they bring together all these developments under one sort of umbrella. And this is going to be really important because it allows this year to really be the year of the AI agents. And what are AI agents? You've probably been hearing a lot about them. Um, let me just summarize what these agents do. So agents understand the intent through natural languages. And you can see how, you know, we've all been pretty impressed by the developments when it comes to language models and the understanding that they have of uh, our natural language. So the agents have that. Um, and, you know, that's happened. The understanding piece has been happening for some time now. But the next really important uh, distinction that AI agents have is that they're able to also plan by using reasoning and contextual awareness. And this is what I was mentioning in terms of these latest models have become really good at reasoning. And since they're all coming under one umbrella, um, they could really make the agents much more uh, effective. So the agents understand the intent, they plan based on reasoning about what to do, and then they take action on what to do by leveraging tools. So um, you could connect different kinds of tools that help the agents take action and since they are intelligent, they will be improving over time. So if they try something, it doesn't work, they'll learn from it and they'll uh, adjust. Now, this could be scary for some people. And of course, we've got to take, keep in mind all of the safeguards that, that need to be in place. And you don't want to give the AI agents access to you know critical tasks, especially these days. But you can start uh, making use of them in things that are not as critical. And in the context of custom service, we're going to talk about how you can use them. So before I jump into that, let's just uh, do a quick recap of, you know, how did custom service evolve? Um, so, you know, we all, you know, know about custom service coming into play where companies would set up a uh, someone to answer the calls. Initially, it wasn't really um, a customer service rep. It could be the of the reception receptionist in the office or someone that basically picks up the phone. Um, but with time, this became um, uh, needed to scale. And as such, call centers were set up where there were several agents whose main purpose was to support customers. Uh, then systems developed behind that to help them, you know, for supporting, uh, you know, the customers more efficiently. Um, but with time, the demand kept on growing because people want better service and companies have to compete for the better service. 
So what happened was the establishment of technology at the time, when I started my career very, a very, very long time ago. These are some of the things we used to sell. They were called IVR systems, interactive voice response systems. So, and a lot of companies still use them today. Press one for this, press two for that, when you call on the phone. And I'm sure a lot of you have some really bad experiences with this or frustration because a lot of the times the options are not ideal. Uh, sometimes you want just a quick answer and you have to go through several menus to understand and try to speak to someone. So even though they did solve you know, part of the challenge in terms of handling volumes of traffic of customer service, but they didn't really address as much the improvement in customer service. There was still a need to talk to human agents um, to solve real problems. Uh, and the IVR systems become, became just a way to quick, uh, you know, answer quickly a few simple things. So what happened is that then the call center agents we had started to be increased even further um, because the volume kept up and again the solutions of the IVR systems weren't enough to address the volumes. But that became a big expense for a lot of companies. So what did the companies do? They started outsourcing the agents to other countries. Um, and we've had big populations of call centers set up in places like uh, Philippines, India, Bangladesh, which sort of supported a lot of companies all over the world. And each, uh, you know, the, in the Western Hemisphere where the, the uh, hourly rates were quite high, um, they would find people to outsource these uh, jobs to and tasks to. But again, what happened with all of this process is that a lot of the times the quality of service went backwards again. Uh, and then we, we went back to the same problem where we're actually having a big cost of operation for customer service, but the quality of service is not really improving as much. So then came the smartphones and um, with everyone connecting through smartphones, instead of the IVR system on the phone, we came up with these bots. Um, and today when we talk to a lot of companies and, you know, even large organizations, we tell them, you know, why don't you put an AI based uh, chatbot on your website uh, for better customer service? They'll tell us, well, we have a chatbot. And then you look at the chatbot and it's back basically the same kind of thing as an AVR, IVR system. It's a bot that tells you, OK, click here for this or click for that. Um, and it's very limited, doesn't have much intelligence in it, if any. And it's basically what is called a decision tree where the organization has to set it up and there are different options for each of these clicks, but it's very restrictive and very frustrating. So there's been a need for um, disruption and we believe that now customer service is ready for disruption. We have the tools to make it happen. So the simplest tool for um, customer service to be disrupted uh, and the service to be improved while reducing the cost are the simple smart chatbots. So uh, these are intelligent bots that can be sitting on the website, answer a lot of questions. They can be trained on your data. Um, for anyone that knows our products, I mean, we have a chatbot that can be up and running for $50 a month, trained on you know your data, uh, set up in a no-code environment, so you don't even need coding to get it up and running. And it could be set up in a few minutes. Um, so, so these bots are intelligent, they can interact, they can interact with the users in different ways. And these could be the first, what is called first level of interaction with customers before they get transferred to a human. So the humans, uh, agents are still very important. They would be, you could access them through WhatsApp in the case of a chatbot, where if the chatbot doesn't answer or can't answer a specific question, it can transfer the call to WhatsApp, or these days we also have voice-based customer service bots, AI agents that can talk in natural language. And I would encourage you to, you know, after this call, try out our own voice-based support. Um, you can access it on this uh, link here, ai.potential.com slash support, and have a chat with our support agent just to get a feel of how these AI agents using voice now can do such a great job in um, answering questions, interacting with customers. 
Um, and this way you save a lot of costs of operating a, a customer service. So, uh, you know, a customer service setup. And we're going to look at some of the metrics um, that companies usually look for when buying uh, products and how does that relate to the customer service aspect. So uh, a recent uh, study by Menlo Ventures highlighted that the selection criteria when customers want to buy any kind of um, AI product revolve around two main key metrics. One, easily quantifiable ROI, return on investment, and something that could be customizable for the organization and the industry. And as I mentioned earlier with the chatbots uh, and even the voice bots, you can easily customize them and train them on your data in, in you know, sometimes minutes. It could take a day or two to really get perfect at it, to get a really good level, but very quickly could be customized for the organization and industry. And the ROI is really amazing, which we'll talk about in a bit as well. So the other, um, you know, you, when you look at the use cases uh, of AI that are being used by companies, you can see that support chatbots are the second highest use case when it comes to the use of AI by companies. So this is definitely an area that companies have, a, you know, a pain with and have found that these solutions can actually address that pain in the organization, can provide better customer service at a, uh, a better price. So let's look at the price for a minute. So we have a lot of research on this um, level, but I wanted to give you like high level numbers. Um, and of course, every company, every geography has a different kind of metric. But when you look at the averages, the average cost per call um, from a customer usually is you know around the $4 range. And when you now deploy a text based bots i mean this could go to cents or even fractions of cents because the cost is so minimal and it keeps on coming down because the ai developments are moving so fast on the other hand when it comes to hourly costs um you know for human-based agents answering calls that could be around 30 dollars an hour when you look at the cost of the agent the overtime uh, you know the resources around it the systems around it and that, at the moment, uh, can be reduced by a third to ten dollars for a voice-based AI agent. So you, you know, you're seeing a huge amount of savings um, in deploying this, along with a great quality of service that could be, uh, you know, also deployed. So it makes a lot of sense from an ROI perspective for companies to move to use AI agents and. I'll end with this uh, summary from Boston Consulting Group's recent uh, report, which showed the kind of uh, gains that organization that are leading AI adopters can achieve. And you can see here the, the returns and the improvements are across the board. Um, employees are, feel better because then they can feel that they're doing more meaningful things. The good employees that you really want to keep would then be you know, uh, uh, their productivity will be unleashed. They could feel more empowered to do the next level of things that they can provide. And some of the employees that uh, are not doing that great can either move to jo other jobs where they could do better, um, or if they don't cut it, uh, you know, they could move to an another organization, another field. So of course, there's a lot of um, disruption that also happens at the human level. Um, with uh, people and we should give people an opportunity to upskill and to move into other areas where they can be more productive. But the important thing is that the good talent that you have will actually be more satisfied as you can see in this uh, report. And of course the return to the company in terms of savings and return to shareholders and you know overall operation of the company becomes much better once it's using AI um, extensively. So that's it from my side. I hope you're, uh, you know, aware now, convinced of um, using AI agents for uh, improving your customer service. It would definitely reduce the costs if you already have a customer service set up. And if you don't have a customer service set up and didn't have one because it was cost prohibitive, now you can actually start with simple chatbots, like we said, set up, uh, you know, in minutes or a voice 
text-based bot that could be on your website answering uh, direct calls from customers um, all done in you know matter of days and for a small amount of money uh, compared to the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars that you had to in the past set up or used sorry uh, to invest in to set up a call center operation so that's it from my side i'm gonna pass it over to emma and uh, she'll be coordinating a few demos for you to see some of the bots in action um, and other tools that we've sort of working on uh, and we'd love to hear your feedback um, i'm available on the chat so if anyone's got any questions we'll be answering it while we're going along thank you very much and over to emma